Hey smart people, Toby Salami here. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can connect a WordPress form to a Google Sheet such as this. And here is how it works. Let's just type a name and an email address. I'm going to call you subscriber, but I want to make sure you're a subscriber first. So hit that subscribe button below if you're interested in WordPress tips and tricks. Let's come to email address and add anything of our choice. That's a long email, but it works. Now you want to click on submit and let's see inside of our Google Sheet if that works. There you go. Now that you're here, let me just show you how you can get this done. By the way, thanks to BitApps for sponsoring this video. The only plugin you really need here is BitForm. Every other plugin here really doesn't matter. Whether you use Elementor or Bricks Builder or whatever kind of plugin you intend to use as your page builder, it's entirely your choice. I also have the pro version here because this lifts some of the restrictions which I do not want. I'm going to show you some of those restrictions as we go on in this video. But of course, you can also get the pro version using the link we have in the description below. It's an affiliate link, but it supports me and adds no extra cost to your purchase price. Just keep in mind that whatever we show in this video can be done with the free version. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead to create a first form. You just want to come inside of BitForm Pro by clicking on it through the WordPress menu right here and just click on create first form. We have a first form ready to be created. You want to start from blank or use any of the available templates right here. Some of the templates available here are actually pro templates. So you just want to keep that in mind when you're selecting any of them. Okay. Let's select any template here. I'm going to make use of the contact form template here by just clicking on use template. Inside of the form builder here, you see it looks pretty good. User experience wise, this is one of the best form builders I have come across. Once you land on the builder here, you have everything you need, the name, email, and message. Let's take off the message field. Maybe we just need the name and the email. Of course, you can make use of any number of fields you have in mind. For me, this is good. Once I'm done with that, I just want to click on update form has been updated. Now come inside of settings and inside of settings, you want to come down here to integrations. We're looking for the sheets integration. So we're just going to type in sheet, Google sheets. There it is. We want to select Google sheets right now and just give this integration a name. In my case, I'm fine with calling this Google sheets. So I'm just going to remove API. Now we have everything we need, the homepage URL, the authorized redirect URI, and I'm going to show you how to make use of them. The next thing you want to do is to come inside of Google Cloud. You can select Google Cloud by coming inside of console.cloud.google.com, just as you see here in the URL. Type it out just like that and click enter. You'll be met with a page that looks like this. What you want to do is create a new project. So I'm just going to tap on the current project here and click on new project. Now inside of the project settings here, I just want to add a project name of my choice. In my case, I'm going to say sheets connector projects, something like that should be fine. And I just want to click on create inside of here. You see, you have a project created called sheets connector project. Give it a few seconds. And once it's done, click on select project. Now you're inside of the project you just created. Excellent. The next thing you want to do now is to come inside of that menu item there and come to APIs and services. You want to enable all of the APIs that you need to get this done. The two APIs you need the API for sheets, and the API for Google Drive. To do that, just come inside of Enabled APIs and Services and just add a new API. Click on Enable API and Services and then type in Sheets. Once you search, you see now you have Google Sheets API right here. Once you click on it, you want to click on Enable right there. Once you enable it, you want to come back here and select the second API that we need. Let's do that. We're going to come back here and just click on enable APIs and services and select Google Drive API. Search for that and you find it right here. Next, you want to click on enable. You have your two APIs enabled, you're good to go. The next thing you want to do is to click on the OAuth consent screen right here. You can select the user type either as internal or external. Anyone you select here will work just fine, but I'm going to select internal for this use case. So when you select that, you want to click on create inside of here. You want to type in the app information. This again is entirely your choice. I'm just going to type in here, connector app. Anything like that is fine. I want to select the user support email. I don't want to add a logo because I don't want to go through the verification from Google. I'm going to come down here to domain and I'm just going to type in here the homepage URL as a domain. Just going to type in there inside of privacy policy. I also want to add a privacy policy link. I'm just going to type in privacy after my homepage URL. 
Inside of Terms of Service, I also want to do the same thing. This time, I'm going to add TOS after my URL. Inside of Authorized Domains, I'm just going to add my top level domain name here. Of course, you can't add a subdomain inside of your authorized domain. So you just want to type that inside of here. Once you have that done, select an email address here. I'm just going to type in dev at tobisalami.com and I'm going to click on save and continue. Now you're met with the next page scopes. You don't want to select anything here. You just want to click save and continue. And you're met with the last page, the summary. And at the end, you just want to click on back to dashboard. You are almost done. Now, click on credentials and inside of credentials, you want to click on create credentials. The credential you want to create in this case is OAuth client ID. Just click on that. And inside of there, you want to select the application type. In our case, we're creating a website, so it's a web application. So you want to select that and click on the name. Select any name of your choice. In my case, I'm just going to type in Sheets for Toby. Anything I type in, is entirely my choice. Inside of authorized JavaScript origins, I want to add my homepage URL there. Inside of authorized redirect URIs, I want to select the URI created and given to me right here. You see it here? Authorized redirect URI. I want to copy that. I want to come back inside of the Google Cloud settings here and I want to add that authorized redirect URI right here. Once you have that done, just take note, as you see at the bottom here, that it may take about five minutes to a few hours for settings to take effect. So just keep that in mind. Now, click on create. Once you've created this, you're almost good to go. You have your client ID created for you and also your client secret. Just copy the client ID as you see there, come back inside of Bitforms, paste that client ID inside of there. You wanna come back, copy the client secret and paste that client secret inside of there. Once you're done with that, Next thing you want to do now is click on authorize. Now you would have this pop up, which is going to load and show you all of your Google accounts available to you. The Google account you select here should be the same Google account that you used to create the Google Cloud application. All right. So let me select that in my own case. And I'll be met with this next page that says I should approve that this should read all of my Google Drive files. OK, I accept that. So I'm just going to scroll down and click on allow. Once I allow that, you would see now at the bottom right of this page that this has now been authorized successfully. Excellent. Now we have the ability to click on next and go to the next page. Inside of here, I want to select the spreadsheet of my choice. All you need to do is to ensure you've previously created a spreadsheet. So let's check that we've done that. You just want to come inside of any browser tab and just type in sheets.new, just like that. Then create a new spreadsheet. I've created mine already. And as you can see it here, it's called connector form contact submissions. I've also added here both name and email address, two of them, just like that to match the ones inside of the form. Okay. Once you have that created, you want to come back inside of the form and just select that spreadsheet. In my case, it's connector form contact submissions. That's now selected as you can see right here. Now, you see at the very bottom of the workbook I have created here, you see you have all of the sheets available to me. In my case, I have just one and this is the default sheet one. OK, so I just want to select that inside of here. Once I select that, you see now it fetches my Google fields for me. This is name and email address, both of them, as you can see here inside of my workbook. Excellent. Now, you want to make sure that the header row selected here is the exact same one that the header is inside of. Whatever is going to be your header, you just want to make sure you specify that inside of here. So that row is correct in my case. OK, now inside of map fields here, you want to map the form field one to one. My form field name, I'm going to map that with my Google field name. I'm going to add another one and my form field email. I'm also going to map that to my email address. Once you have that mapped, you're good to go. Next thing you want to do is click on next. You see here it's successfully integrated. Excellent. We're doing good here, aren't we? This connection is done, but we're not quite done with the form. You want to come inside of conditional logic here and specify that that particular integration should fire on form submission. You have your conditional logic already created here for you because of course we created this as a template. You see, you have a lot of options here, but let me break this down for you. Inside of action run when you have this option that says record, create and edit. And what this simply means is that every single time that this form is submitted, that is a new record is created, then it's going to update the Google Sheets for us. Also, if it's edited, it's also going to update the Google Sheets for us. 
And this is good. This is exactly what we want. We want this action to fire on form submit, only on form submit. So we're going to select just that. Inside of action behavior, we leave it as always. We don't want to select a particular condition for this. If we want conditions, we can select a lot of conditional logic options right here. This is entirely our choice. But just keep in mind that there is a limit to the amount of conditional logic you can add to your form if you're still on the free version. So you need to grab a pro license to be able to make use of multiple conditional logic options. OK, let's continue. The next thing you want to do is to select the integration option at the bottom here for this particular conditional logic. The integration option that we need is the Google Sheet which we created. Once you have that done, you want to click on Update. Now let's come to the front end and test if this works for us. But before we do that, we want to click on Publish and grab the shortcode for this form. After that, you want to come inside of the edit page here and you want to paste that shortcode inside of here. Whether you use Elementor or Briggs, again, this is your choice. You just want to make use of a shortcode inside of your build. In my case, I'm just going to use the shortcode widget right here. I'm going to drag that inside of here and paste that shortcode inside of there. Once I have that done, I want to click on Publish. In the front end, I want to check how my shortcode looks. The form should look OK. I don't care about the design right now. I just want to test it out. So let's test it out. Let's come to name and just type in a name and an email address and submit. So I'm just going to type in here your name inside of email address me at tobisalami.com. And I'm just going to click on submit. It says the form has been submitted successfully. I want to come inside of my sheets and there you have it. Excellent. Let's test it again. Again, as the name and instead of email address, email at tobisalami.com. Now I want to click on submit and test if this now works again. And there it is, another entry inside of our sheets. This looks good for us. Now this is how you can connect your forms to your Google Sheets and have it work seamlessly. That's it, my people. If you have any questions, leave that in the comment section below. If you don't have any questions, still leave a comment. It helps with engagement. My name remains Tobi Salami. And until next time, my people, stay dynamic.